You know, but that's just because people see how much money Big Pharma makes and they're so greedy that they want some of that money, you know, and so they go sue Big Pharma and Big Pharma's like, well, what can we do? We have lots and lots of money and these people are probably meditators. And so let's just give them a hundred million dollars and just let's hope that, you know, because that's how Big Pharma is, okay? They're trying to help. Greetings, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. So last week's video was five reasons why you should not meditate. And this week I'm going to read some of your comments to that video because I think there are some very uh, interesting and insightful comments that you've offered. And this is what I've been asking for since the beginning of this year is really more or less to have a dialogue on some very important topics. Okay, so let's get started. So Joel commented, I think meditation is not so good as it makes you more accountable for your own well-being and you actually have to get to know yourself better. I cannot live in a world without distractions. It's such an important comment because, you know, taking responsibility for your own well-being, um, that's just such a sucker's game, I think, because, you know, with so much available out there, that you can kind of just outsource your own personal responsibility and outsource your own, uh, you know, well-being to others. I think that's a far more attractive option than it is to, you know, do something as silly as meditate, waste a whole bunch of time, not get anywhere. Um, obviously, um, you know, it, it'll make things actually worse if you do meditate. Everyone knows that. So that's pretty clear. So Joel, thank you so much for that uh, affirmation. Um, that meditation is definitely a waste of time and it's, it's, it's actually quite dangerous. So thank you for that comment, Joel. Okay. Next comment here is from Danielson1223. So Danielson says, I think I might agree with your video here, even though I meditate some. That's interesting. You think you might agree but you meditate some. Uh, first, I would just warn you, I mean, don't even dabble in this. It's like dabbling in the occult, uh, dabbling with drugs. I would advise against even dabbling in meditation. Okay, so I wouldn't even dabble if I were you. So let's get back to your comment here. Getting back to Daniel's comment, he goes on to say, I also take pharmaceuticals for my mental health. So I agree that probably pharmaceuticals are big time more effective for mental health than meditation. They helped me with my mental health way more than meditating. You know, daniel San, that's just it. Um, what, what's confusing me here about your comment is that um, you're even considering meditation. I mean, pharmaceuticals are clearly the answer and those are working for you. So hooray. And I'm not sure, so I'm, con I'm a little confused as to why you ev would even waste your time with meditation when clearly pharmaceuticals um, have done way more for you than meditation ever could. So I'm, I'm a little confused. Maybe it's, maybe it's because you're dabbling in the meditation and it's confusing you and you don't know how to get, a, get away from it. Just give me a call and I'll, I'll try to, you know, I'll try to talk you through this and help you know, give you some tips, um, some low key tips that I'm not really allowed to share on social media that might help you, that might get you out of this meditation doom loop that you're in. Because I can tell my friend that um, you're going to need a little extra help. So, okay, so let's continue on. Although I meditate, I do it from a religious Buddhist point of view, rather than from a secular point of view. From what I understand, at least in the early religious Buddhism, the point of meditation is to lose the sense of individuality by way of a religious experience of not-self. Whereas, for the secular meditations, it just, it's just to calm down your anxiety, stabilize your mood, etc. So, Daniel... You know, being calm 
and alleviating anxiety um, that has nothing to do with the sense of not self as you say is the non-self those couldn't possibly be related in, in in my reckoning i don't i don't see how an emphasis on the self and then you know kind of on the you know being on the hamster wheel of the false self and the ego i don't see how that could at all relate to anxiety or depression or anything like that so those two things um i think you're right those things aren't aren't related at all moving on with the comment here the religious experience and religious buddhist meditation from what i understand seems to be that everything is interconnected because everything is made of the same constituent subatomic parts um let me just pause right there for a moment um everything is made of the same subatomic parts now when you use the word parts daniel uh, and again, this is probably the meditation that's doing this to you. But when you use the, use, when you use the term parts, that infers separation. Um, so there's a bit of a contradiction there because you can't have um, you can't have parts and then have a whole. There's just they're just an entire whole. There's a holistic sort of sense here. So that kind of brings us back to this idea of non-self and everything being sort of a uh, an eidolon to the overall um you know uber daemon let's say the the all conscious awareness but anyway we're kind of getting off track with with that part daniel goes on to say i've never been able to see the subatomic parts in everything when i meditate but i have seen kaleidoscope visuals when i stare at things like trees in the forest and the feeling i get from this is surreal I also meditate with my eyes open in case anyone is wondering. I learned from a Japanese Zen nun that, I, that, that you can meditate either with or without your eyes open or closed. That's, that's wonderful. I mean, look at you. Um, unfortunately, that, um, you know, the Zen Japanese nun is clearly delusional because she's a meditator. And we know meditation is a waste of time. But thank you very much for your comment, daniel -san, And I hope that you can um, take more pharmaceuticals and feel better. Okay. Next comment from Nico Nico. This is hilarious, LOL. Nico, uh, this isn't a um, sort of thing that we're, you know, we're doing this in a respectful way. I'm glad that you found this to be entertaining, but this is a very serious discussion we're having about meditation and why it's a giant waste of time and why it doesn't help anybody and why pharmaceuticals like Daniel Son uh, obviously pointed out are much more helpful than um, dabbling or messing around with meditation. But I do appreciate your comment, Nico Nico. Next comment, if one sits specifically to meditate, one isn't meditating anyhow. You do it 24-7 or you're simply not meditating. And that's from the place where you are. Well, the place where you are, thank you for your comment. And, you know, I have to agree with that. And it makes me think like, you know, if that premise is true, then, you know, if you sit down to record a video, for example, then you're not really recording a video at all. Because if you sit down to do such a thing like record a video, then you can't possibly be really recording a video. So I agree with you. Everyone, let that be a warning to you. If you're even thinking about dabbling in meditation, sitting with your eyes closed and letting that calm kind of eternal bliss of Brahma just wash over you. Think twice about that. Really think about that. Really consider uh, what you're actually doing because that calmness, you could get addicted to that. You could get, you could get really, you know how everything's addictive these days. Video games, food, drugs, sex, 
Um, everything you can think of under the sun is addictive these days, okay? I watched a... You, have you seen that show, My Strange Addiction? I was watching that show, and there's, there's this lady on the show who's, like, addicted to eating, like, toilet paper, right? She's just, you know... And there's another lady who's addicted to sniffing gasoline. Um, it's very addicting. Well, meditation's no different. You can be addicted to this feeling of calm, this feeling of eternal bliss, this feeling of gratitude for your own life, gratitude, and really, you know, really going in and listening to people for possibly the first time in your life, really listening and opening your heart. These are all very dangerous things. So be very, very careful when you mess around with meditation. Okay, next comment from Marcel Kuiper, 5474, says, Sarcasm is boring. F all humor. Existence is being battered by a 0.004% chance cluster of black swan events. <laughs> oh, Marcel, what a wonderful comment you have there. Um, well, first of all, I can tell that Marcel hasn't meditated too much because if he or she did meditate too much, then the sense of everything being integrally linked and having a very holistic uh, property to it would, um, would prevent you or wouldn't lead you to making such a comment because, you know, to believe that all of these black swan events are seemingly disconnected and disparate, um, tells me that you haven't um, been negatively influenced by the evil gravity of meditation to the degree that, you know, our friend Daniel Son has, for example. So, good. That gives me hope for the future. Um, so, thank you for your comment. Next comment from Tello Hasfu 4390. You people need to get better names. I mean, these names are awful. These are probably just bots that I'm re replying to anyway. My way of meditation is skateboarding. It makes me happy, and I'm still fighting depression, so this is my way. And it's the only thing that seems to work for me. It takes me out of the world for that time, or the world becomes just like a park for me. My doctor called me to make sure I took the antidepressants that she ordered me because she noticed that I didn't buy them. She literally told me that I was going to feel worse at first and then begin to feel better eventually. I told her about skateboarding and she said something about it being childish and that it wouldn't really help me emotionally and I would suffer bad falls and will be worse, it will be worse for me, etc. So first, let me, <clears throat> before I read through the entire comment, let me just respond to the bad falls thing because people, yeah, um, people that don't understand one, and this is kind of an aside, I, I suppose, but, you know, as you learn how to skateboard, one of the most important things you learn as you're beginning is how to fall. I mean, there's an actual way to fall. You don't fall like a complete dork and just land the wrong way and hurt yourself and you can't get up and skateboard again. What's the point of that? Right. So actually learning how to fall is something that intuitively, uh, if you're really motivated to, to learn how to skate and to do it well and to learn tricks and to progress, um, intuitively, you will learn how to fall. Yes, you're going to get hurt sometimes. You're going to get, man, I've had so many injuries. I'm feeling injuries that I've had <laughs> in my 20s. I've, I'm feeling injuries from like, you know, 15, 10 you know, even 20 years ago, I'm, I'm feeling those injuries today. I don't regret any of it. But, you know, you learn how to fall. So that's the first thing. So anyone who has those kind of comments, a doctor or whatever, you know, everyone gets, you can get injured doing all kinds of stuff that's considered normal or whatever. So, you know, listen to that, that person. And so far, your doctor didn't recommend that you meditate, which is, phew, that's a good thing. So that's a real good thing. And I'm really, I'm, I'm really encouraged to see that they haven't, uh, they've, they've, they haven't uh, recommended that you meditate because that would be a disaster. But let's just get back to your comment. 
So you say, I'm so tired of those that try to change people for the worse. Skateboarding saved my life when I had nothing else, and I feel like this would uh, change everything. Let's see. Uh, I feel like... This world tries to change everything that makes me happy to replace it with bullshit, like meditation, and that I'd have to get used to, uh, used to it. Meditation is a door to happiness, but I believe it can take many different forms for different persons. Okay. So, I'm with you with the skateboarding thing. You kind of lost me on the meditation part because is meditation a door to happiness? Well, go back... You know, earlier in the year, when I talked about happy, what does happy mean? Happy actually means lucky. So, um, you can't meditate and expect to be lucky, if that makes sense. Okay, meditation and and and, and being happy or being lucky have nothing to do with each other. Okay, um, but yeah, all good comments. Um, your comment was very good. I would say towards the end, though, the meditation part, if you could just, you know, fix that um, and then take as much farm as you can. You know, it's a good thing, okay, to use all the pharma that you possibly can. And, you know, pharma gets a bad rap because, you know, they're the most heavily fined corporation in the history of humanity, you know, they have um, hundreds and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in criminal fines and damages. And, you know, but that's just because people see how much money Big Pharma makes and they're so greedy that they want some of that money, you know, and so they go sue Big Pharma and Big Pharma's like, well, what can we do? We have lots and lots of money. And these people are probably meditators. And so let's just give them $100 million and just let's hope that, you know, because that's how Big Pharma is, okay? They're trying to help, okay? They're trying to help. And I feel like if Big Pharma gave even more money to the meditators, I think finally the world would probably start to improve. I mean, that's just my sense of it. So I hope you have a wonderful week, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you on the next one.